So we will um, start this meeting on, for district uh, lodge presidents and secretaries were invited and board members or others who just wanted an update on the, um, on the lodge elections. So um, obviously during the year of COVID, we've all been kind of challenged in a number of ways and especially with meetings. And then, you know, kind of we start looking at that, that calendar and the deadline of when all these reports are due. And um, we thought it might be helpful if we look at some of the different areas and do some, you know, smaller meetings for people to kind of tune in to see, you know, what's, what's happening and how can we help people and, and what can we do to assist and what might we need to go to international to find out about. So, um, so anyway, so hopefully this will be helpful tonight. So I'm going to share my screen for a little bit and um, I've got about 8,000 things open on here, but this is the, the district YouTube video um, uh, or where I post the my district videos and so forth. And this was that uh, announcement that he had Hi everyone, about I'm David Crabb. And this week I want see. to take a couple of moments just to inform you about okay. a couple of very important changes that have happened recently to both our charter and constitution and our policy and procedure. Can you all hear that okay? We received a couple of emails no. about this, but we want to really make sure that you uh, are aware of these changes and the way that this affects your ability to meet and to vote as lodges. You know, as we start the fall when a lot of lodges are getting back to meeting and gearing up for their annual programming, this is a different time. Uh, most of our lodges are not able to meet during this time. And so one of the probably the most frequent question that we've received is, hey, what do we do about elections? What do we do about the slate of officers that's about to roll off and bring on new officers? What about meeting to conduct other important business matters? How do we handle this when we're not able to meet in person? And as we've looked at our charter and constitution and our policies and procedures, in many ways they were limiting in the fact that folks had to meet in person to be able to conduct important business. And that was really because, you know, in the past we couldn't have anticipated a moment like this. So two important things have happened that we want to make you aware of. Number one, our international convention, the delegates to the international convention are the supreme governing body of Sons of Norway. And they took a vote uh, that was just passed last week that amended our charter and constitution. So in order for our charter and constitution to be amended, that does require a vote of that delegate body. They voted and passed an amendment that now allows lodges to conduct referendums, to conduct elections, to conduct other votes via electronic means or via the mail. So that's a very important piece. So now our lodges are not uh, you know, forced to have to try to get together to be able to elect officers or to conduct other important uh, matters that require voting. They're able to do that electronically or via the US mail. So that was an amendment to our charter and constitution. The second thing was that uh, the policies and procedures section of that, of that uh, CCPP book uh, was, was recently amended by our international board to essentially reflect the same kind of language. So the policy and procedure manual was voted to uh, make an amendment to allow um, lodges to conduct referendums, to conduct elections and votes via uh, electronic means or, or US mail, but also to be able to meet electronically. So there might be uh, other kinds of business that needs to happen or discussions that need to take place and, uh, and, and decisions that need to be made. And so the policies and procedures section was amended to reflect the fact that lodges are allowed to meet now um, electronically, maybe over Zoom or, or whatever it is the technology is that your lodge is using. So these, this kind of rounds out a sort of package of things that the International Board and the delegates to our convention have done in the last month that um, we're really thankful and I appreciate how quickly they've moved to be able to make these decisions so that as our lodges come into the fall and so many of you are asking questions, hey, what do we do? What's the next step here? Uh, this provides our lodges with the tools to be able to continue to make important decisions, to be able to hold elections, um, even when you know, you may not be able to meet in person. I want to make you aware of one other thing, and that is that for some of you, it really may be easiest to not hold an election or change officers at all. And we want you to know that you do have the option as well to allow the current officers that are in place to just roll over and continue for one more year and you kick it back to fall of 2021 or whenever it is that your 
uh, term expires. And so we want you to know that you, you have that option too. If you look at the at your situation and think an election might be a little too difficult to hold at this time and your officers are willing to continue one more year, you have that option as well. We want you to know that we're working as hard as we can to make this lodge time, during this unique time, your lodge experience as, as positive as it can be, to give you all the tools and resources that you need. So we wanna say thank you for your feedback to us. Uh, the calls, the questions are in many ways what kept putting this on our radar and making sure that we're working ahead and thinking ahead to make these kinds of decisions. So please do continue to reach out. As we move into this fall, this is the first time for all of us that we've experienced something like this. Um, what issues is, is your lodge facing? What, what uh, resources, what um, means of communication do you need from us? Uh, let us know. We really wanna be here for you and continue to support you during this time, both here at headquarters, but then also our international board and the Delegate Star Convention. So a huge thank you to them, both of those bodies that uh, made these important decisions in the last month. I want to make sure that you know about these so that you can continue to move forward as lodges as we seek to navigate these uncertain times together. So thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for the wonderful progress that we continue to make. We're in this together, and we look forward to coming out on the other side of it stronger than even before. Thanks, and have a great week. Okay. Very good. So that uh, hopefully gives you some background a little bit on, on uh, kind of the, um, um, the information, you know, from the international. So that's David Crabb, and he um, is kind of our key contact now for kind of lodge business related items and so forth. And so again, he's been doing these videos. So any questions or comments on, on his part at all or things that um, had, had just a show of hands, how many had seen it before? Or remember seeing it and so on. Good, a number of you are watching it and so on. And uh, again, he's doing those weekly ones. So, you know, so kind of bottom line or the takeaway points from his presentation is that number one, the International Lodge delegates or the people who make up the International Lodge, and that's the people who served as delegates in Minneapolis back in 2018, have made official changes in our bylaws and, and the Constitution and policies and practices were made by the board so that you can meet virtually, you can conduct business virtually, if you have any referendums um, that need to be done, or your election of office officers or items of business, you can do that in a virtual meeting or you can do it by U.S. mail. So, um, so that's a, you know, a, a really good change. It gives us a lot of options. I think the other takeaway for me was that um, it's okay if, if you feel you know, it's just too hard to get people together or to, to get a nominating committee to be working to try to you know, solicit new people to, you know, to be officers and your, other, your current officers are willing to continue, it's okay to let them do that as well. So that's what happened with the district board. That's what happened with the international board, that those boards have just continued and will until the 2022 district and international lodge uh, meetings. So, um, so you've got some options that way as you're, you're meeting with your group and kind of corresponding with them. So, um, so if yes. This is Linda Hash. Yes. So regarding rolling over your officers, what is the protocol for that? Does that okay, require I, communication with the... I'll, I'll show you in a, in a couple of minutes when okay. we go to the international website, if that's okay. But I'm going to write it down too for just so I don't forget. I have a good memory, but it's short some days and so forth. So, so if it's okay, I'm going to go back and share my screen again. And... Um, and hopefully I can find the right places. So have, it's really important that, that somebody in your lodge knows how to log into, your, into the, the system to get into the members only section. So um, when I, when I kind of share the screen, I can't see everybody's pictures and so on, or let me see if I can scroll down through it. But if you have had problems or you don't know how to log in, um, when you go in, you can, like asked to log in and I you know when I first did it it seems like it's a hundred years ago and it was your membership number and the first five letters of your last name is how they initially did that now I think they kind of assign you like a temporary password and so if you've never logged in 
that's one thing as a president or a secretary, I would really encourage you to do. But once you go in, and my profile looks a little bit different and what I have access to is a little bit different than what you do because as district secretary I can literally go into all of the the lodges membership databases for our, our districts so for you as president or secretary you'll only see your lodge and some of the board members that are on here you also ha probably have access to see as many but um, where you need to really start before you start updating officers or rolling them over is with membership list. And when you click on the membership list, um, you have to say that you're only gonna use it for Sense and Norway purposes. So it doesn't matter if you're in here all the time or not, you always have to check that box each time. And when you go in, and, and again, I can see all the different lodges and so forth, but I'll, I'll use my lodge, you can download in either a PDF file or an Excel file, and that will open up your complete membership list. So I'm just going to do a, a PDF just because I think it's easier to view initially and so forth. So when I open up the mat one, before you even start to update your officer list, you need to have the new officer's membership number. And so um, I, I kind of have learned this a hard way and sometimes I forget from year to year, but when you um, are, are going in, I downloaded the PDF, it will have the membership number right underneath their name. So that's really important for those new officers before you even start trying to update the, the officer form or, or the online form, you need to make sure you write down their membership number completely. The other thing that I really recommend doing before you um, enter the, the officers, um, and keep in mind that once you update them online, it's gonna look like nothing has changed and nothing will change online until all the lodges report their officers and until Sherry in the international office rolls them over. So if you, like I updated the Matt Lodge ones about a month ago because we had already, we, we don't elect every year, so we're on our off year. So I knew we didn't have any changes. So I did ours, but if I would have changes, I, she has to wait till everybody in District 5, and she really likes to wait till all the lodges in all eight districts roll them over. So if you update them, a lot of times I'll get an email from, from you guys saying, well, you know, I updated the officer and there's a new president and I'm still getting stuff. That's because that major database hasn't rolled over. So just an FYI on that. But this is where you're going to find those membership numbers. Oops. And then I just logged myself out. That's the problem I always have is getting, remembering where I'm at and what I can X out of. So here we go again. So now um, I'm gonna go back in. So again, this is how you, you get back in. So now if we go to the officer, lodge officer updates. And one of the things I can help you do is if you are stuck and, and you need some help with it and so on, I can also go in and, and change your officers for you. So sometimes, you know, if I'm working with lodges and we're past the deadline and I haven't heard from you and we've sent some reminders and we still haven't heard, I'll start call by calling either whoever I can get a hold of. Usually I start with the president and then I go to the secretary to see what changes. And if they tell me, well, there aren't any changes, as we're speaking on the phone, I can usually update your officer thing and then you're done. But let's go back down to Matt Lodge, I'll, I'll use ours. So the first thing you can do is over on the right hand side, it says change meeting information. So this right hand column says where you meet, when you meet. And so if there's a change in your location or now you, you've, um, oh, I see Mary Zarufi is on when Eden sold their building and they move to meeting in the church, this is where you change that. So when you click on that, it will let you um, put in the new information and then you can save it. And so again, that goes into the system. It may not show that change right away, not until Sherry rolls over all the changes and so forth, but this is where you can change it. And so if you're uncertain about a meeting location, you're uncertain about the dates and times and so on, this is that part where you can, can um, go into that. Any questions on the meeting location part? 
Okay, then to do the officer. So when you click on the officer list, it will give you your complete list of who was listed as an officer the last time. So to answer um, your question, Linda, if you have no changes, you'll see right at the top, there's a box that says no changes for the upcoming year. And all you have to do is click that, and it will enter it into the system, I think, and we can do it because it, it doesn't matter on mine. But um, yeah, basically I clicked it and it's, I'm done. So that's all you have to do if you have no officer changes. So really, really easy. And um, if I went to my email, I would now have an email saying that there was an officer um, update, Matt Lodge has no changes. So I get that as the district secretary. So if you update your officers online, I automatically get an update. So I kind of keep a spreadsheet of who we've heard from. And then as we get into December, then I'll be reminded reminding people and as I get close to December 31st then I'll selectively remind the ones who haven't done that. So now if we were going to change and let's say Matt Lodge said they're tired of having me as president and it's time to get a new president, what you would do then is take the number of the new president and, and they would replace and you can see where I'm circling my membership number. That's where you would highlight that and delete it and then you would add in the new officer number. And so um, I'm just gonna put mine back in, but, um, but that's how you make that change. So you'll do that. You can do all of, I, I would suggest going right down through your list and typing in all the new numbers because what will happen when you get that all done, you'll go down to the bottom and it has a red box that says mm -hmm. submit changes. And when you click on yeah. that, before it sends it in, it will say, now you've replaced Darlene Arneson number whatever with, um, with John Arneson. And it'll say, is that correct? And then you'll say, yes, it is. And then it'll, it'll go through that list. So again, you can do all of them. I try to do them all at once if I can, um, you know, to go through the list. So that's where it's really handy okay. if you did your homework first and had that new list of who's a newly elected officer and what their numbers are, because then you can plug the number in. And if you, you know, click on it and, and instead of it saying John Arneson, it says Jens Arneson, and you realize you're we're off a digit, it lets you correct that. So, you know, so it isn't, you know, a terrible thing if it goes, you know, bad or something. Um, in our lodge, we have two sports and recreation directors. If next year when we elect officers, if we um, decide we're only going to have one, that one of our two isn't going to continue and the other one wants to and nobody else wants to be a second one, then you'll see there's a little box that says remove this position. And all you do is click on that. And then when you do the submit changes, it will say, you're removing Jens Arneson as a sports and recreation. Is that correct? So it makes it really easy, you know, to change an office or to, to remove it that you don't have it anymore. Now, if you have new positions, let's say, you know, last year you had a really hard time finding a financial secretary, and so you don't have that listed on your officers, you can add a new position as well. And so what you'll do is you'll click on add a position and then it has a whole list of officers that you can choose from. So again, um, like in our lodge, we own a building. So we have a property president and vice president and so on. And so that was something new that we did last year to add those onto kind of our master um, officer list. But if you were going to, you know, pick that assistant secretary, again, this is where you'd put in that new membership number, and then you'd submit it, and then it would know it needs to, to add that. And it'll confirm that as well. If I was adding um, Henrietta Snodgrass as our assistant secretary, it would, I'd plug in her number, and then it would say, you're adding Henrietta Snodgrass as a new assistant secretary. Is that correct? So they give you lots of checks and balances as as far as doing it. But again, um, to kind of, you know, um, review on this page, if there's no changes at all, all you do is click no changes for the upcoming year. And that's something that I encourage you to do, you know, if you're, if you're having a hard time deciding or getting officers and, and you get to December and, and, you know, 
you know, typically a snowstorm would be the issue that we usually are canceling meetings for or bad weather. Um, this year, it may be that it's just not working to do that virtual meeting. And it's going to be January before you elect your officers. Um, I'd still encourage you before the deadline, just to click the no changes for the upcoming year because you can actually go in and change the, your officers anytime you need to during the year. And so if in July, you've got to change one of your officers moves away or for they took another job and they don't have time to do it, or maybe you recruited somebody now for a vacant position, anytime you can go in and change this. So, you know, so sometimes, you know, when, uh, when people are, are adding their officers and updating it, I might get five emails from a lodge that some will do it once, one at a time and so forth. And, and that's okay. Some will do it all. All at once but I would really encourage you in this year of COVID if you haven't elected new officers as of December 31st just go in and click that no changes and then if you decide in January or February or whenever we can be back together that you guys really want to change your officers um, then go back in and you just do it like I, I just demonstrated and that's all right as well um, and, and what happens is once we have all the officers in that from all the lodges in our district and Sherry rolls them over on the website, then she sends me a master list. So I get a, a big Excel file that has all the lodges, all the officers. That's what I use to create that district directory. And so if there's other changes during the year, I try to keep that as up to date as I can of sending up out is sending out updates and keeping the board informed that now there's a new vice president, there's a new treasurer that they had a switch and so on. Um, and usually she's able, if, if she gets all eight of our, us districts in, sometimes we'll have that master file by like January 15th. So that lets me get the district directory out, you know, pretty fast. So, um, so that's, you know, you can, again, you can change, you know, your officers anytime you want. Um, but we really are asking you try to do it by December 31st, you know, for this year. And again, if you need to add new positions, you have a new officer that wasn't listed last year, just click on that add a new position and there's a drop down menu, you can pick it out. They don't have all of them there. And so sometimes, you know, like we have a sunshine, you know, in our lodge, and I don't think they have that one. So sometimes we just can't list them all. And, uh, and if you feel it's important to have that one, email Sherry and do a little lobbying and say, hey, you know, I think sunshine's an important thing. And why don't you consider adding that? And I don't know, I don't know who approves what the final officer list is and so on, but I would think that they could, could listen to us a little bit and so on. And again, if you've got where you need to remove an officer, you just click on that remove this position. So, so it makes it, it pretty easy to do. And the thing is, if you mess up on something, you know, you can email Sherry, you can email me and say, I, I put in something wrong, or you can just go back in and, and redo it. Because when I get the, the emails, like if I, let's say Cheryl's updating Benelogs and, and she, and I get five emails that Benelog has, has updated their officers. They send me the complete list each time. And so I just use the, the last one that came because I figured by then all the changes are made. And, and, you know, if I need something, you know, from them prior to when I get that master list, that's the one that I'll go to. Um, the only other thing is that when, when I get the emails from the international, I just get the complete list. So if during the year you change an officer, you have a new treasurer now, you've got a new vice president, and you update it online, if you can just shoot me an email, because I don't have any indication in that master list of what the change was. And not that I'm lazy, but I got a few <laughs> irons in the fire between work and stuff. And it just makes it so much easier for me if, I, I, if somebody can just shoot me email. So sometimes what I'll do is if I get that notice, and let me just see if I can go into my, my Gmail just because that Matt Lodge one should be there. Um, uh, yep, 
this is what it looks like when I get um, the update. So it's, it says no changes for this upcoming year and so on. But I get this whole list of who the officers are. So I don't know that you changed your assistant secretary or your treasurer. So if you're doing it during the year, you know, kind of in July or August or, or whatever, um, just shoot me an email. Because a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just forward this to the president and secretary and say, can you help me out and tell me who changed in your in your lodge? And that just, you know, it makes it go a little bit faster for me. Mm -hmm. We'll go back to. So anyway, so this is how the officer online form works. So any questions on that? And I'll let you unmute yourself to ask because again, I can't see everybody when I'm sharing my screen to see if there's a hand up. So you don't need to put the name in. It'll automatically nope. come up. Yep, you only use the numbers, so okay. only the numbers. And that's where it's really helpful if you ask your officers ahead of time. Usually what I do, we elect our officers in November and then they're installed in January. So usually in October, I'll download the membership list for our, op, you know, and sort it by the officers. I usually download it in Excel. And then I'll say, here's what your membership profile has for your address, your email, your phone number. Is that correct? And if it isn't, I try to get them to go in and get it updated so that when I do the officer election form, I know all their information is correct. Because I, I, I will guarantee you every year when I send out that district directory, I get probably a minimum of 10 emails from people saying, hey, my address isn't right, or we don't have that landline anymore. Well, that's what your membership profile says. So that's the key of doing that. So you're just entering numbers, and then they're pulling the address, the email, the phone number from what's listed in that members profile. So any questions on this part? So now we're, we're gonna sneak in and, then, and to get out of like the membership part, you gotta click on either the red box or to go up on Sons of Norway and that'll get you back to where we usually are. Um, if we go into the member resources and then under the lodge leadership resources, um, they, <clears throat> excuse me, they make you click a few times which is a disadvantage of the new website, but it's got lots of good things too. So you go to administrative resources and then you go to lodge forms. And so this is where you can find um, the old D63 form and they did update it, which I didn't realize they had done. And, um, and so you can download it and I actually have it saved here. Um, so, this is the form that traditionally was sent to your lodge secretary. And so this year they did not send out any hard copies of this. So it was emailed to the secretaries. I'm not, I, I don't think the president's got it. I didn't get one as president of Matt Lodge. So for those of you that are presidents, check with your secretary uh, to make sure that he or she got it and, and they kind of know what to do with it and so forth. Um, they do on this give the option of sending it in. But when you download it online, the difference is it's all blank. When they used to send it out, you know, hard copy to the secretary, it had your current, like in my case, Matt Lodge officers all filled in. And so if they want to fill this out, manually it's a lot of work for them and so forth <clears throat> unless if it's the same member and then they can check the box but this is what that form looks like um, the key though on this document is sherry has her instructions of how to fill it out online and so we i've been putting um she emailed it to me as well so that's what i've been putting in the friday news i've ran it a couple times now and i'll i'll send it out again to presidents and secretaries and so forth but it basically just walks you through the same thing that I just verbally did. So that's the good part of the document. The other way you could use this document if your president or secretary printed it off is just to have the information organized, the number and so on, when they want to go online and do it. So it can be a working kind of a homework sheet and so forth too. Um, but that um, they, they do provide that one for us this year. Um, See, that then, one, that one lists the, you have to fill in addresses. Yeah, I, that's it. Yeah, I, I, unless, 
and, and I, I, I asked Sherry if she wanted to hop on the call tonight, but I didn't hear back from her. The only thing, Adri was that Adrian who asked that? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, the only thing that I'm guessing is that if there are no changes, if you check the box, same member continuing in office for 2021, then you probably wouldn't have to because that's what they would enter. But they really don't want to see this form in Minneapolis. They really want you to do it online. So I would really encourage you to, to you know, to either work with your secretary or if there's someone else who is more comfortable doing it online, or you can work with me as well. And I can help, you know, walk you through that process and, and so forth. So either, either way is, but I, um, I, I kind of got the impression from talking to Sherry several times that they really don't want to see this form up there. They really want it online because basically doing it online takes away, you know, basically the, the, Error, the human error that someone's entering something in wrong or can't read handwriting or, or something like that. So, so this is due on December 31st. So um, this year, since we probably aren't going anywhere, um, I think I'll, I'll probably be contacting people on December 31st after work if I haven't, you know, heard from them. My goal is always to, you know, to try to, you know, get everybody's in and so on and, and to try to do it, you know, as, as best we can and, and so forth. Um, um, but that, you know, is, you know, we, we do what we can and if we can get everything done and, and so forth, you know, that's a great thing. For those of you who haven't spent a little bit of time on the on the members only section in this lodge forms, you know, this is where you're going to find a lot of really good information and lots of forms that are updated or editable forms and so forth. Um, you know, looking ahead, um, we're going to be um, looking at, you know, the family lodge of your, uh, you know, applications, the lodge achievement form, Forms, and this is where again you can find all of those so um, you know so it is a good place you know to spend a little bit of time and and if you think like something tonight is helpful then we can schedule one for that Lodge Achievement Forum and for the Family Lodge probably combine those two and um, and I kind of put a bug in Mike's ear a little bit too on the audit forms the D17 forms and 990 that it probably would be good to have a call with the treasurers and financial secretaries and people involved with that you know just to to talk about some of those things so so that's where you can find um, a number of these um, if we go back and I think I can get to it some of my things are hidden behind um, so I basically you know I set up the YouTube channel it's it's the Sons of Norway Mant Lodge one and um, I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to do it when I started, but there's a playlist on there for District 5 training videos. And so on here is where I've posted a number of the mm -hmm. things. Um, you know, another one that we did a video on is the fraternal gives of how to do that. And then Sherry Gorse did a, a, a video as well that was published last week on how to do fraternal gives. So you've got two opportunities for that. Um, I do have a tube from one that's there, um, how to fill out the DC. 63s. This is the one that I've shared the link a couple times. So if you forget or you were trying to take notes tonight, um, I have the same information on that video. So you can always go back. That's shorter too. It's only 15 minutes. And, you know, we've got COVID ones and uh, the zone alignment and, you know, and, and also that five minute one that I showed at the start from David Crabb. So I'll continue to add, I'll add tonight's recording to that as well. So I guess going to the the D63, any questions at all that you have on that? I'm going to quit sharing for a little bit so we can see each other. Um, so the YouTube Wendy is Sons of Norway, Stoughton, Wisconsin is the channel. And also um, the International Sons of Norway has Sons of Norway HQ is their official um, channel where you can find things. And there was one other question. So Cheryl had a question about words of wisdom for new presidents. So um, uh, I don't know, we have, a, we have a number of seasoned presidents on here. Any words of wisdom from some of you of what you, uh, what you have for advice? Oscar here, uh -huh. no, no questions. 
No questions. Excellent. That any advice for us, Oscar? No. No. Okay. Well, I think I think as president, I think we do get overwhelmed with a lot of things that come. And I think we all have different ways that we process the information. And so, um, you know, I know they're doing a lot more electronic and obviously with COVID, that's kind of the way it is right now. Um, you know, but I think saving some of those into a folder, whether it's in your email folder to, to put some of those videos that you can go back and watch. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier too, internet access is an issue for people. And, and you know, I try to do as much as I can on Wednesday Days and Thursdays because that's when I'm here in the office and we have good internet here um, you know so I think sometimes you know if if you're in a situation where the internet is bad um, you know working with some of your other members who might be able to, to help you um, and I, I think also using your zone directors is important. You know, we have um, an excellent board. We've got members who want to help the lodges that they're representing. And, you know, but I think we also don't want to be overwhelming and intrusive and looking over people's shoulders or making them feel like we are, you know, so don't be afraid to ask. And if your zone director isn't sure about something, they can check, you know, with some of us who've been around a few years. And if we don't know, you know, I go to the international office and and I know Cheryl is our new vice president has been using and talking to a lot of staff at the international office and you know they're there to help us as David Crabb said you know we're all kind of learning you know through this process together so those would be some of my nuggets of, of things that have helped over the years and so on other questions well, then I want to show you uh, a couple of other things, if that's okay. So um, one of the, um, the, <laughs> the, the things that I got to find where I'm at down here. Give me, uh, that's, so this is a memo that I had in the, um, the uh, Friday news. Here we go. So the zone alignment. So, um, so this has been an interesting process. We've been going, I think, 18 months on this and we're still making changes and so forth. So I sent out a, a, an update um, in last week's Friday news and, and sent it to all the district um, lodge members, those who served as delegates in La Crosse. Um, what we found is there's a, a, a little bit of confusion and, and it's probably on my end that I'm not clarifying things, you know, directly and so forth. But one thing is with our district, we're in District 5. So we're Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, and Tennessee. That we make up District 5. And within our district, we have six zones. And it's those zones that we're looking at changing. So I had a question from a lodge member this past week, and they said, you know, we just bought all new vests for our new members, and it says five, and then their lodge number, and is that going to get messed up? No, we're still in District 5. It's just within the zones that, that we're looking at a possible change. But our zone makeup is, is something that the district lodge members have to vote on, not the board, but the, the district lodge members. And the district lodge is made out of whoever serves as a delegate at a district lodge meeting. So because we didn't have that in 2020, the delegates who served in La Crosse are still the district lodge and they will serve until 2022. So if you were a delegate in La Crosse, you still are our, our governing body for the district. So that's why when we say district lodge members, it's those delegates who served at the previous district lodge meeting until the new ones are seated. So they're the ones who will be voting. So it's not a lodge vote, it's not a president's vote, it's not a board vote if we're going to change the alignment of our, our zones. It's only those people who were in La Crosse. Um, another um, thing that, um, you know, people have asked about is, is, you know, is, you know, how, how do we make sure that the delegates know about their, their lodges feelings and, and so we had some, you know, several calls and some of you were on some of the calls and I encourage, you know, people who served as a delegate from your lodge to La Crosse, you know, to, to get on the agenda for your lodge meetings and to talk about it and so on. But we, we kind of had some changes in what we were looking at. 
uh, one, and I think, and we have some of the, the board that are on, so feel free to jump in. But um, we had a, a really good call, several, oh, I can't, the weekends tend to go into, um, into one after the other. So a few weeks ago, we had a call on a Saturday. I think we had 15 or 16 people on. And that's when we had proposed the one major realignment. And there were concerns with that. And, and they had some suggestions about going to seven zones rather than six and, and doing that. And we went back to the committee and then we had a board call on it. And, um, and you know, there's a, a beauty of having people being able to, to talk and visit and share things, especially at a district lodge meeting or the conventions, um, you know, and to hear what other people have to say. And when we do virtual calls, only so many people call in, the dates might not be good for people or their internet or for whatever reason they can't get on the call. So it seemed like every time we had a call, kind of the, the focus was in a different direction. And so then the committee was kind of struggling with, well, this group of people like this and this group didn't, then the board asked about this. And so we thought it might be good to, to give us more time. We had kind of hoped to, to send out the, the ballot to the um, 2018 delegates in early December for to look at a major realignment. But we really feel that not only with the pandemic, but just without having that opportunity to really hash it around and, and get feedback, we wanted to wait. And so we thought it was best to do that. And so basically, there's, there's two things that we're asking for your help. Um, and the, the, we'll be asking for um, the vote from the 2018 delegates on. One, we will definitely run in December. And that's what I call the cleanup motion. For those of you who have been a delegate to a district lodge meeting, um, each biennium, if we have lodges that have closed, that have merged with another, that have formed and so on, in order to get them into our bylaws, even though things have happened, and that's how it is, that we lost a lodge, we gained a lodge and so on, they're not in our bylaws until they're voted on. And so, um, so we have three lodges, uh, Sholin, Haverspirit, and Samhold that disbanded or merged with another this past biennium. And we, and Wendy is on tonight, the new, the new president is Shawnee Scogan. So we have a brand new lodge down in Carbondale area, Southern Illinois, that technically isn't in our bylaws yet because we have to vote on that. So this um, bylaw proposal, what I'm calling bylaw proposal number one, we will definitely bring to the 2018 delegates or the current lodge to act on so we can get our bylaws up to date. These things have happened. To me, it should be kind of a, an easy vote. Um, we need to have a two thirds vote to pass a bylaw. And so, but it's j basically just cleaning up the bylaws and so forth. But then on the second one, to kind of look at a major realignment, um, they decided to, to go with um, some looking at the top. We, we did, I think we've done two like big surveys. We did one survey before that, but on this second survey, um, options one and three were the most popular. And one was to leave it at, at six zones and to, to move them around and move lodges around. And, and uh, we looked at a variety of different things, the mileage and, and kind of working relationships and we had input and so forth. Another proposal was to go to seven zones. And, you know, and the crux of why we're really looking at this is that our current zone six is has a huge number of, of um, lodges in it. This is what our current structure is. And zone six, you know, has has 12 lodges in it. Right now, we've got some zones that have five. So um, it's a lot more work for those zone directors. And plus, when you look at um, where they're located, we've got Ohio, we have two lodges in Ohio, two in Tennessee, one in Southern Illinois, Michigan, Upper Michigan in the UP, uh, the Western part of the UP. And uh, we, we really felt that with this kind of gift of having the extra year, it'd be nice to deal with the zone alignment and have you know the, the delegates vote whether they want to have something or nothing or, or whatever. And uh, before our nominating committee is elected next spring, 
um, to have that decision made of what those zones will look like starting in 2022. So, so that what we currently have then for you to, to kind of hash around and your zone directors will be leading some discussion is, is three options, options A, B, and C. A, um, going to a restructured um, six zone, uh, option B is having seven zones, so we're adding a zone which adds expense and so on. The option C is just leaving it as it is. So, um, so we'll you know be doing some communications on that, and I'll probably do another kind of Zoom presentation, and we'll set up a number of calls. But what the board talked about on our last call was to have some some zone meetings virtually as well where they can really talk to the lodges within their zone uh, some lodges are very adamant about and they have a, a deep you know a relationship with the other zone or lodges in their zone and they really want to stay together others you know have responded that they don't have a connection with some of the other lodges they haven't had a lot of zone activities or they're so far in, in miles from others that it doesn't matter to them. So we have everything and everything in between. So that's kind of the, the status. But what we're looking at, you know, for timelines is in early December, I'll be communicating with that those district lodge delegates from 2018 with the cleanup proposal. And um, I'm trying to get some information from the international. When they had the international lodge members vote on these bylaw things, it was electronic. So they sent you a link and you voted yes or no, and it was you know, no discussion or anything. Um, and so for our, our cleanup one, I think we can go that route. Um, but for the other one, uh, we're kind of looking at, you know, how, how do you best do that? And, you know, do you send a ballot that they send back? Do you have them do it electronically? Do you use Google survey? Do you use SurveyMonkey or any of the other ones that are out there? Um, but we won't make a decision on doing any major realignments um, if we're going to run a proposal until closer to March. So we want to use the winter to talk to members and listen to members and see and then um, move ahead with that. So that's kind of an update from, um, you know, the zone alignment committee. So any questions off the top of your head on that or just on the process? Again, yes, V. And I'm going to, let's get you unmuted. You may need to do that yourself. I usually don't have luck on muting people. Let's see. Let me try it again. There you go. Um, is there any consideration given as to the number of members if there were to go to a, a number seven? Um, in other words, many of the, the current ones in six have large memberships. Maybe some of us, in, in, when we get into number seven, uh -huh. would find a bit much, much smaller group. We didn't look at the number of members within a lodge. Um, that was something that they used to do is based on membership. And in one of the, the surveys and in, in discussion with the committee and the board is we asked some of the zone directors if it makes a big difference if they're visiting or helping or working with a lodge let's say Wergeland that has a, a are there, they're our largest lodge, or if they go to Viroqua or Westby where it's a much smaller, and really they felt the workload wasn't any different. Sometimes it's, it's more work with a smaller lodge. Um, so no, we didn't look at the number of members within a lodge. We're looking more at, at logistics and distance and how can we best get those lodges to work together or to meet together. So it wasn't based on the membership in within that lodge. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. And again, we'll have a lot more information on this, but um, but again, just to recap kind of the highlights, the people making the decision or voting will be whoever served as delegates in lacrosse. Um, 
it isn't changing what district we're in. We're all still staying in District 5. It's just what zone people may be in. And then again, in early December, we'll be sending out the ballot for the cleanup motion to just to remove those three lodges from the bylaws and to add Shawnee Scogan so it's cleaned up. Um, and then we'll decide in March it, the committee will meet again looking at all the feedback that we get and calls and so forth as to if we're going to look at a major alignment or if it's overwhelming to leave it as it is we'll do that and you know there was there <clears throat> there was some discussion you know in some of the calls about that it's you know really the ideal place to discuss a major change like this is at a district lodge meeting where everybody can hear and see and discuss and and you know during the coffee breaks hash things over and so forth and that it's hard to make a huge decision like this um, but in my mind it's kind of a golden opportunity for us because now we have the the nominating committees to deal with and the only concern i have is that if we make a major change and we wait until the district lodge meeting that nominating committee has probably done their work with what the current structure is so if we're going to change it we have to look at when does that change become effective is it in two more years or or how does that work so so anyway, so we'll move to a more positive thing. I'm going to quit sharing my screen and I'm going to call on Mike Pelichek. And I'm going to have, Mike, if you just want to explain Nordic News, how long you're thinking you're going to be in the television broadcast business and uh, a little bit on inventory and items you have that lodges might want to consider promoting with their members for holiday giving and so on and also the card project. All right. Well, I'll start with the card project because that's easiest. Uh, we purchased, we had a Scandinavian photo contest, and I think we had th about 340 pictures that were submitted. Uh, anybody that was a member in the district could vote on them. We sent emails out, and I think 135 people voted on uh, the winners. And there were 50, um, two cards plus four troll jokers. And there were 57 different uh, photographers that were selected for the deck. Uh, we ordered a thousand decks. They all got sold. Um, a single deck was $14. It was $10 plus postage. We built the postage in. Uh, 10 decks was $100. And, uh, those sold out in like three, four weeks. And we reordered uh, in the end of the first week of October. They're, they'll be in um, right after Thanksgiving. And 221 of those thousand decks have already been sold. And we're, we're just sitting on the checks. We won't deposit them until we ship. So I'm gonna be busy uh, the week after Thanksgiving, sending cards out. Uh, but people really like them, and uh, the order forms available on the district website um, under member benefits is where uh, all the merchandise for the districts under member benefits. Would you mind? Thank I, you, Darlene. Yep. I, I'm I'm loving this because I usually have to drive the computer for Darlene. There you go. So if you go to benefits uh, in the bar, District Five merchandise. There. And there's the and you click on the order form and it pops right out. There you go. And Corlene and Linda, I'm just looking at people that are here. They both were. Uh, winners in the contest. Uh, somebody else was. Jean Sievertson in her newspaper even printed a and story about it. Can. Wendy, yeah, Wendy was a winner. Uh, but there were a lot, I know that Vergelin had quite a few people that were uh, winners. Cheryl Wiley Slesher was a winner, and there were a bunch of people from Benelog and Mant that were uh, winners. So, uh, there that is in case anybody wants to get some Christmas presents or share it with people in your lodge. Oh, thanks, Darlene. These are all the pictures that were submitted 
343. And if you click on any one of those, Darlene, you can see it big. And then you just right click on it. Oh, just stay there. And you see the little black. Um, and you can just click through and see them all. And uh, they're actually a little bigger size than the plane card is, but they look great. All right. Uh, any questions on that before I go on to something else? If there is, just open up your mic. Lower left corner, unmute. Okay, well, there's going to be a test on this when it's all done. <laughs> uh, other products that the uh, district has, um, we uh, published the Hidden Heroes book, uh, which was something that uh, Jean Bittner, uh, and somebody else in her lodge got real involved with. That was maybe 20 years ago. And uh, we added pictures and took the best stories. And uh, that book is um, available. I just got an order today for five of them from somebody Great. in North Carolina. And it's also available on Amazon Books. Uh, the first Norwegian Settlements in America is another book the district did. We're going to use that book as one of the texts in the uh, Norwegian American history class we got planned for January and we'll talk about that later we got flag pins uh, I know some like uh, uh, Virgilins here I know they had a whole bunch of pins at one point Wendy had a bunch from the leadership conference uh, but there's still some available sweatshirts why don't you click on uh, do we have a bigger picture of that? No, I guess not. Oh, the order form has a bigger picture. Maybe, oh, that's how you order everything. But the sweatshirt's really pretty cool. It has this Explore Your Nordic Heritage logo on it. Uh, the hat's really nice. We got quite a few of those. We have a few aprons. I think we got about a dozen. And they've been real popular with the women. And when we had the photo contest, the top 10 winners got their choice of either an apron or the sweatshirt. And uh, those were specially embroidered, uh, added on people's choice award winner. And pretty much the guys picked the sweatshirts and the women picked the aprons. <laughs> but they're still available and the order forms there. Um, the order form doesn't say it, but if you want to place an order, uh, before Christmas, you'll get 10% off. I guess I should update that order form. That's all right. Okay. You want uh, to talk about Nordic news? Nordic news. Uh, let's go to, uh, pro oh, there we go. So can you go back up to that blue bar so everybody can see where you oh, w went? So she went to Programs Speakers Bureau, and that's, where Christina Fairchild, who's our new webmaster, her husband Richard had done, did it for four years, I think. And uh, every week I do a Tuesday night news, uh, Nordic news, and it's a COVID, was a COVID activity, just to people <laughs> engaged. And the recordings, you see the URLs for the recordings. Yeah, just click on one of those. That one Wendy did on, she might sign autographs for us. Yeah. And uh, don't start it because then, it, you know, you'll listen to all the audio. But if you click on details on the upper right corner, okay. that's how you download it. Okay. Is that right? Did it do it? Yep. Yep. And then that little arrow to the right of media, come on down a little. Okay. I, you're, you guys are hiding it. My thumbnail. Here we go. Okay, so just a little bit to the right, you yeah. see a down arrow thing, to, and that would be how you would download that. And I used um, uh, uh, we did a genealogy one, I think, that I recently used for a lodge meeting, and we also so I don't I'm doing virtual meetings with my lodge, and I don't always have a program ready. Um, and so I've been using a lot of these Nordic newses and just replaying them on Zoom. And we're going to do one next week. Venelog Lodge's member Olivia Cook is going to be the presenter next Tuesday on 
Christmas traditions in Norway, and she's going to compare um, traditions in Norway and the United States. And she spent about a year and a half in Norway, married a man from Norway, so she really knows a lot about it. And so Nordic News is going to be on Tuesday, and I'm going to just replay her presentation as the program for my lodge meeting on Wednesday. So, um, and the question is, why nobody's asked me this question before, how long am I going to keep doing it? I think it's been 27 or 28 weeks that we've recorded them. Um, and probably in January, when we introduce the Norwegian American history class that we're working on for the district, I'll probably switch over to that. And I'll be recording the Saturday presentations. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mike. Any questions for Mike at all? When we're on the district website, I just want to show you um, the Friday news is under news and events. And then um, this is where it's posted. And so you can see all the past issues are there. Um, basically, the link that I send you each week is the link up here. And so I'm not sending you the one directly for um, that Friday news. And so um, all their email really is is a reminder to you to go look at it. And I usually don't send out the email until I see that it's posted. And so, um, so the emails go to anyone who's a lodge officer that we have an email. So when I get that master list from Sherry of all the lodge officers in District 5, I just use that email list for it. But it's for all members. So you can feel free to share it with your members. Members, or you can put in your lodge newsletters, your social media posts, that lodge members can go to the website and they can see it just as quick as you can. Uh, some of you have figured out that, you know, it, that usually it's posted before I get the email out. Because to, to be honest with you, like this morning, I sent it to Richard and Christina before I left home at like 6 30 and by the time I got to work they had it posted so um, so if you ever have things to put in um, you know we I, I'm not trying to do like publicize events and so forth because I, I just I've been trying to keep it more news and so on um, but my deadline is is four in the morning on Thursday morning because I need to have it done and sent off before I leave for work. So you've got till four in the morning. Sometimes Mike is sliding in. If I'm still working on it at five, I get his in. <laughs> and not, and uh, But anyway, but that's just how I function and, and so forth. So it actually goes to the webmaster Thursday morning. So you have it on Friday. So, and that again started out, I thought, oh, I'll just do these occasionally. And I think we're on year five of these. So hopefully they're helpful, but they are for any member to, to look at at and to read and to update. It's just another way that we can keep in touch with, I think, our leadership especially, but um, just on things that, that we're um, um, that we're, you know, trying to, to, you know, keep track of and, and it forces me to keep up to date too, to read all the things and, and so forth that need to, you know, to, that keep coming from international because there's just so much and, and, you know, we try to keep it in our head and, and so on, but, you know, some days the head works better than, than not. So, um, any questions or remarks for the good of the order? Um, was this helpful tonight to go through like the officer election? Yes. Yes. So, kind yes. Of? Okay. yes. Good. Very good. Um, and if you oh, feel okay. this would something would be helpful for like the lodge achievement and family lodge, I'm I'm more than happy to help you know do that. And again, I'll, I'm going to kind of put Mike on the spot as far as uh, D17s and 990s. Um, Linda's got <laughs> hand up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I still have a question about the uh, rollover uh -huh. and not how to do it on the form, but does, I mean, does that, is, is that essentially a vote that needs to be taken by the membership that says, yes, we want to retain our board? Well, I think that, you, that? that that is a decision of your lodge. So, um, so, you know, your lodge needs to, if you elect, do you, do you elect officers every year? Yes. Okay, so at your next lodge meeting or officers meeting, whichever comes first, you know, they should 
you know, be discussing and, and probably starting that discussion at your officers meeting and whatever their recommendation is to the full members at a regular meeting. And I'm guessing that's probably virtual to say, you know, we feel that just in this year, maybe it's best for us to, to continue in our role for another year and skip elections for for next year and have your members vote on that. So, and they okay. can vote again on a, a, a Zoom meeting or a, you know, or other types of meetings. So I know what what we do? Election, you're just electing the same slate of officers. Say that again, please. It is essentially an election, but you're just electing the same slate of officers. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, if you're either okay. it, you're either voting to continue the officers in their current position, you know, and some lodges may want to say we want to to um, keep our officers until we can meet in person again. So it may be july you know hopefully we're back at things by july maybe or maybe not um you know so i think that's what you guys can talk about at your meeting is is do we want to continue in our current roles until we can meet in person and then elect or should we just continue for the whole next year and wait until next year's cycle but that's a decision based on on that video we watched at the start that now the international lodge has has made those changes so you can decide on your local level and then if you're if if your lodge says we just want to keep continuing until next year then all you have to do is click that no changes for this year i tried to make it official i listed the ballot in uh -huh. the last woods deacon yeah and then i put a tear off ballot on oh, there okay. and so the membership has been sending me back whether they accept or reject that oh, suite okay. of officers. Excellent. And it's been successful. They've been pretty good at sending back the ballots. Excellent. And then hopefully in January we can um, meet <laughs> and say, this is our slate and we're ready yep. to go again. Yep, there you go. That sounds good. Linda, did you have a follow-up question? Well, I just wonder, does there have to be a quorum or a minimum number, a percentage of- To be of honest, responses? that- that that's based on your local lodge bylaws so the local lodge may not have a quorum number in their lodge bylaws so um so and and what i i know like if a lodge is going to disband all the members have to be notified so it may be something that you put in your newsletter that goes to all lodge members that we're having a virtual call on december whatever and we're going to decide on that call whether we're going to have our officers just continue for another year or whether we'll hold elections for new officers so please be on that call or let you know you know ahead of time what their their feelings are but that there isn't a quorum unless your local lodge bylaws say this is what ours are and so that's going to lead to the next question what if i don't know where our bylaws are um, if you don't have a current copy i can look in my file to see the last time i got a copy of it but sherry gorse at the international would have the most current bylaws for your lodge and my guess is the, there's quite a few who don't have a minimum number for their quorum. So, and, and I know in our lodge too, most of our discussion is done on what we call our business meetings, which are our old officer meetings, what we used to call them. And then they recommend to the regular lodge meeting kind of their recommendations and, and so forth. But the, the most of the discussion and the hashing out the details is usually done at the business meeting or officers meeting. So we can look on that too, and I can see if I what I have when I get home to see if I can find um, for a current one. But I'm not always sent a copy of the updated bylaws when a lodge does that, so I try to do my best to keep updated. Sue's got a question. Uh, yes, my question is. The last time we updated our bylaws, I don't believe that the International ever signed it and sent us a copy back. Oh, okay. I've been after them about updating the one online, you know, that many years old up until just a, okay. this update. So do you 
know if they still do that? They're, they're supposed to. Um, they're supposed to, you know, have it signed and then send back. So we have, you know, kind of the official copy. So I, I would just kind of remind them. I, I know sometimes things get, you know, on the back burner if they've got other deadlines or something coming in. But um, from what I understand, they're supposed to sign it and send it back that they've accepted those changes. So thank you. Um, yeah. Other questions? Yes, Oscar, and we need to unmute you. There we go. Yes. You and Mike presented a lot of good information. I learned a lot. Well, good. Karen here, got several pages of notes. Excellent. She's a good note taker there. That's good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I hope it helps. You know, again, I, I learn as I go through too. Mike's got a question. Uh, Carlene had a question. Okay. No, it's I'm fine. Sorry. Okay. Fine. Um, Darlene, I just wanted to mention if there's lodges that need help with virtual meetings. Uh -huh. I know I've been working with Jean uh, and we did some meetings in Loven and they worked out real well. They're even doing a book group on Zoom now. Oh, wow. um, but if you need help facilitating those meetings and you don't know how, uh, let me know and I'll help you. Yeah, and I know Cheryl um, Slusher too is willing to help. I think she has a, is it GoToMeetings account? Is that? Zoom. Zoom. She has a Zoom I think account. she has a Zoom account. Um, I can help with Zoom ones. I'm not, we use Teams here at work and I'm not the greatest on that, but I can, I know enough to be dangerous, but I don't have it on my personal computer. So I need to do it on, on the work one to help with that. Um, and then Mike can do go to meetings, free conference calls and. I, I don't do free conference call anymore. Oh, you don't? Because no. of the audio quality is not okay. that good. Zoom or go to meeting. Okay. And, and we've also, you know, we're, we're hoping to have a training for our, our zone directors as well to help them feel more comfortable. But, you know, I think we all feel this is our role too, to help where we can to, so if your lodge has struggled or it maybe hasn't met and you really want some help in meeting, um, you know, virtually, yeah, just let us know. And, and between, I think Mike, Cheryl and I, one of the three of us can certainly make ourselves available to help you out and and so forth but i really appreciate your time tonight and and you um taking time and it's always good to see everybody and so on i you know it just seems like it's been forever that we our our um community did a raise the flag for veterans day yesterday so we put up flags like at six in the morning and then had to take them in last night on different routes and it was just so nice people came to their front doors and you know visited and it's like oh my gosh there are people out there and and so on because it just seems like we're all kind of stuck stuck wherever we're stuck and so forth. So, but yes, uh, please, you know, don't be afraid to, to call and ask and so on. And, and um, you know, you can always contact me on my cell number. And if I'm busy at work, I'll call you after work or, or whatever. But Mike's really good about responding to things. And um, we try to do our best to, to make ourselves as available as we can. So, but um, if there aren't, pardon? Yeah, thank you, Darlene. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So I'm going to actually end the recording.